Hi everyone, welcome back to the studio. I'm Lindy Witten, if you're new to me. Um, this month on Patreon I'm doing a whole series of um, lessons and school builders and hints and tips so on about using darks in our pastel paintings and our acrylic paintings. So today I'm going to be focusing on a pastel painting and I'm going to be focusing on one aspect of darks which is using a dark background. So I've got four dark backgrounds here. This is going to be our reference photo for this painting. It's a photo of my mum crossing a stream in New Zealand. What I like about this is all the darks and then all this lovely light just carved out of it. So that's what we're going to do. Carve the light parts of the painting out of the dark background. A bit of a hint for you. If you're trying to choose a background colour, chop off the white edges of your photos. It makes it much easier to, to lay them on and see. So here we're going to be just laying them on. So here I'm starting off with the deep blue. And that works quite well at picking out the dark blues in the water. Um, and also would work quite well for some of the, the leaves. Then I have a green. And I don't use a green background very much. But I actually quite like uh, this for the greens in the painting. Then there's a brown. And I don't like that one at all. Laying it on is really a gut feeling for me whether I like it think it could work or not and I don't like this and it's because it's it's too warm it's quite a cool painting and I, I just don't like the browns in it black now black's a bit of a dead color but sometimes it can work really well as a background for paintings in this the back black picks up all the darks and I would just be carving out of it so I'm going to actually choose the black I could choose the blue and that would work really well. I could choose the green and that would work really well. Today I'm going to choose the black because what I want to show you today is, yes, use the back black as the basis of the darks but then layer and layer and layer with other colourful darks to um, establish something that's not quite so dead. What I've done is lay out my palette here already. I don't always do this, but today I have done that. And I've chosen three sets of colours, and they will go with my reference. So I have uh, a set of colours that are going to be the water, and I've got some blues brighter and lighter, some warms and some greens, and that will be the water part. Down here I've got all the vegetation from very light greeny blues. Sorry, I'm trying to get both me, me and this in, aren't I? So here's the vegetation from dark, from light greeny blues to lemony to um, yellowy greens and then through the darks right up to the darkest. And here I've got some colourful darks that I'm going to be overlaying over the black areas. And then finally I've got some of the highlights for the rocks. Let's move straight into it. Um, what I want to do is really just carve it out. So I'm going to start by just laying in um, some of the lines in the river. Just that beautiful colour there. And already we have light. Uh, there are lots of different colours in the water. This way. Um, there's a, a darker green that comes in next to that. So I'm just going to put that in. And then there are going to be more greens down here. So I'm just going to put some of them in. Just a few to start me off. Then back further, it's very, very light. So back in here, it's quite light. And I'm going to put some of those light sky reflected colours. And then they come down here. A little bit of light, but there's going to be some darker there. Yeah. Just using a few different blues. And I'm try, trying them together over here to see if I've got the right ones out of my kit. I might go with that one just to start with some of the darker ones. And you can see that some of that darker um, dark black is showing through and that's what I want it to do. I want the black to show through and become some of the shadows in there. As it comes out to the side, I'm going to 
try purpley blue as well in there. I'm mixing up the blues again. And just bringing them across in this diagonal pattern across here. And using nice horizontal strokes to simulate the water flow. And they come down and combine a little bit with this green here. I don't want to put too much on to begin with. I want to leave some of the tooth of the paper there showing through the black dark background because that will tie it all together. Um, just need to put in a bit of green here behind that. Right on the water. And I'm going to put in a bit of a, a lighter green as well. No, maybe not. This may be so. Maybe so. Let's try that out here. Oh, that's very green. But you know, it's going to work down here where it's very vibrant by putting that in to really suggest some light on that patch of water there and a few other little patches. And if I think I've gone too far, I will just be toning it back with the other green over the top of it. So there's that green. I put it next to it and then I take my other green and I just layer it. And you can see it knocks it back, but not as grayed off as this one. So um, that's laying in the, f the foundation of the water. And I'm putting a little few more strokes in there now. This is much lighter over here, so I'm, I'm going for a bit of a lighter colour which I'm probably going to mix up with a bit of green. And let's try it out over here, a bit of the lighter colour, and what green will I put over it? Maybe a little bit of that one, just in some spots. So it remains light, uh, nice light, but with a bit of green in, in it. So that's coming along quite well. Now I'm going to be thinking about carving out some of these um, sunlit bits of... Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go back up in here because there's a very dark bit of water up there that's got a greeny sort of tinge to it. So I'm taking a very dark green now. You can see how much darker it is than the other one. I'm just pulling that back quickly a small pool of still water and then right behind it is a sunlit bit of um, rock. So I'm going in with some of these light colours. And that'll be the sunlit rocks. Uh, And some little light bits around them as well, so warm and cool there, even though it's sunlit, because some of it will be in shadow. And then behind it, it's much more shadowy, so I'm going to start with just checking out that. I think that might do for the shadowed parts of the rocks back there, and they'll just go in like so. Bring that, that colourful water down there a little bit. We'll green it up a little bit more into this area as well, so I'm going in for the, the darker greens there. But also some even darker greens in that area. So pop back in. And I'm running it a bit over the blue as well, so that they kind of mix and mingle together. This is going to be the area where the rocks are. So in that area I'll just be putting in some of the very warm dark browns I've got there to make the rock shapes and I might put a few in now just to see how they go and it's just going to be little touches of light on the, the dark rocks. And there'll be some very light touches of light as well on those. Some of them will be warm touches of light and some of them will be cooler um, light areas.
and that way I'm just going to build up and carve out all the rocks out of the darks. Over here I'll be working with the greens, uh, just bringing in some bits of um, greenery. Maybe ferns. And just building her. And now I'm going to just keep going with those greens to make the, the foliage there. Some of them are quite bluey green, so you can see that one and that one are cooler greens. Then I have these yellower greens. A full range of different sorts of greens to work with and some quite dark ones as well. Coming down to very dark. And some of them are more blue, some of them are more yellow. Um, some of them are more blue, some are more yellow. And we just want a mix of those in there. So in behind those ferns it starts to get a little bit darker. So we'll pop some of that in. And over here we're going to carve out a little bit more. We're going to keep going with those trees now and just carve them out. You, you can see that I haven't done um, a preliminary sketch of this at all. I'm just working from the d darks, bringing the lights over the top of them. Little bits of lights coming up here and there, there'll be some branches coming through there and I'm almost carving around the branches but I will go back with another dark to establish those. I don't want to be too bogged down in it. Over here in the background it becomes a little bit of a more bluey green coming through there but quite light so just dotting some of those in and background here I'm going to put in some of the bluer light colours so we get a build up of warms and darks um, as the light's filtering through Over here there's another branch coming down over the water. I'm putting that in but I, just a little bit of it because I probably want to go back into there again. Over in here it's all quite dark so that's when my dark pastels come into play. What I'm going to be doing is using them to create the dark area of foliage over here. I'm using some warm browns. redder colours, blues, I've got purple in there, violet colour, they're all dark deep shades and I've got a green, couple of greens that are darker as well. So I'll be using all those to build up this scene so that it remains colourful even though it's quite dark. It's just little dots and dashes of colour. It's quite deeply dark back at the back of the rocks there and I'm using a blue just to pull a little section there of cool darks up over the black and then I'm going to add in some brown to warm up some of that area so they all add to the interest there I'm going over to that meet that little tree there Keeping that area very dark, but with, so that will be the darkest foliage area there, along with um, some quite dark areas here, which I'm just going to scrumble in with this quite dark reddy brown, just for a little bit of warmth over the darks there. And so, so some of that area is quite dark. I'm just pushing it in with this pastel. Uh, I'm going to actually put, using some of my dark greens, quite a bit of dark reflection there. And work a bit of that into this one as well. So it's quite dark. 
and then add some areas of that darker green in here just in little draggy motions, horizontal motions across there. And this is just mixing it up a little bit and I will be going back and you can see I'm just working around very randomly on this one. Adding in a little bit of colour on top of that. It's a little bit too limey green. And I, I'll probably go back in and add a little bit of a more yellowy colour in some of these patches too for, for other little patches of light playing on the water. And little bits of reflection from the leaves. It just makes it all very interesting. And, and more exciting to, to keep adding in little splashes of the sunlight. It makes a lovely sense of um, light on the water. And you can see that the image is starting to be pulled out of the darks there. The rocks need more work here and there are some little rocks along the edge there which I've neglected so I'm going to go back into the rocks and we're going to put in some rocks with some greys, so some cooler colours, and just pulling little rocks out of there. And they're going to come all the way up here. Um, and over there, they're, they're a bit darker, but I also want to put some warms into those rocks as well, so little pops of sunlight where some of them are catching. And then I'm going to take my darks and I'm going to add some darks in there as well. So right along the water's edge becomes fairly dark. There's some darker shadowed stones up here on the edge. And they work their way back into some shadows there. So I'm putting in some purples and browns for the shadowed rocks there. Again, I don't want just one colour, I want to mix it up a little bit. And a few of little touches of that along the, the water's edge as well. And bringing it out a little bit over the sunlit water because it's, there are some shadows of those trees in there. And that will be done in blues and purples and dark greens. So I'm putting a bit of that. That was a purpley brown, now I'm putting in a bit of a blue and then I'm going to reinforce that with some, some green. So. But still remembering to let some of the black show through. So now I'll reinforce those dark blue areas with some darker green. for shadowed areas of the foliage. But I don't want it to be just green. I want some of the purples and blues to show through as well. Some of those shadows are going up here. Maybe not quite so deep. So I'm just running that dark green over the sunlit greens there. But this area, there's quite a lot of um, rocks coming out in the shadow, so just putting some of those out into there so they're kind of silhouetted against the lighter water behind it. These rocks down here need more work. I'm going through now with some of the colours I used up there just to build up some rock shapes. And I, I'm really not worrying too much about what they look like as individual rocks. It's just little shapes going in using a kind of circular motion like so. And varying the size of them and the shapes so there's a little bit of variety there. Actually that one, I want that one to be bigger down there. And keeping some rocks over here 
so the water doesn't take us right out of the bottom of the painting. Make that big rock there. And not forgetting that there'll be a few little rocks that I need to carve out out here as well, just in the stream. So putting a few of those little rocks in, in a few strategic places. And let's keep working on these, adding them in. And I'm just working in the one colour at the moment, but I'm going to change that up in a minute. Add in some more. I'm putting some bigger rocks back in the corner to, to kind of um, keep our eye in here. So the rocks are being built up and you can see where I've put the little patches of light, how they, they jump out. Just reinforcing some of the darks back here with that same colour and then I'm going to go in with some different colours. Put some of these back here, and just little jabs of a warm violet. And I am making the colour up a bit. There, there is, there's no doubt about that. I'm making up the colour, but that's part of being an artist. You don't want to be just always sticking with what nature presents you with. You want to use it as an inspiration to move on. So here I'm just mixing up the greens now with little dots and dashes to simulate the leaves. And making some of them warmer, some of them cooler. And I'm using the same pastel in various places, different passages to unite the painting. Some areas I've got little dappled bits of sunlight. And they're all kind of coming together now. Up in here I'm adding in some of the darker greens now and giving more of a sense of rounded shrubby things because it's a little bit further away so that's why I'm doing that. So quite dark back in there but I will occasionally put a touch of lighter, a few little, little spots occasionally of light showing through, even back in the distance there. Because it helps to give you a good form on the trees and the shrubs and for you to understand what's going on. This could be a little bit darker, so I'm going in with... blue was slightly too bright. I'm just adding a few extra shadows in there now on those rocks back there and it will get quite dark as it comes over this way. Putting a few little extra darks in amongst those rocks, the shadows on them, and then pulling it right back into there and down into the water for a bit of shadow there. I want some more dark blues down here, just a few little squiggles of dark blue coming in amongst all this. And as it comes into the green, so just a little, little overlapping strokes as I mentioned earlier. And you can see how I'm creating a lot more colours than I started out with by doing all those little overlapping strokes. I'm just going to step back and have a look at it now. 
and stepping back does give you a, a little bit of a help and one of the things I've noticed as I step back is that my river isn't really horizontal enough here so I'm going to go back in and reinforce some of these in it slightly more it kind of looked, looked like it was running uphill a bit so I wanted to fix that and I'm going back in doing that now by just making them slightly more horizontal strokes. I'll step back again to check that. I think that's a bit better. One of the things I've done too is I've hung this slightly crookedly, which always puts me off, so I'm now going to rehang it. Not quite so crooked. And that might make it slightly easier. Blue tech somewhere. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Get my blue tech up. Okay. It just now needs to keep working on all of those areas uh, to keep building it up. I don't want to overwork it, but I do need to have a bit more than I've got there. So I'm going back into the rocks again now. And I'll be using some blues in those rocks. Some light violets, some mid violets, and then a couple of warmer yellows, just so I get... a bit of variety in where I'm getting the, the touches of light from. And some of the rocks are, are greyer and some of them are, are um, warmer colours, so I'm trying to take that into account as well as I work my way around. And I want to make these rocks quite colourful in their own right. And putting in these little lighter patches mingles with the darker patches as well and creates extra colours. And put some more warms back in there. And I'll have one patch that's maybe a little bit more uh, light than the rest. Where maybe the, the trees aren't so shadowed. Put some of those blues in as well. For cool areas in there. And up in here it's going to be quite shadowed and I'm going to put in a lot of darks. Back into just um, adding a little bit more interest in the darks back there. And again, it's just tapping on with some of the other darks that I've got. So not black, but just various different bits of dark colours that are going to go over and mingle with the black underneath. Some of them are blues, some of them are purple, some of them are greens. And I'm letting these smudge together a bit more. Than the um, bright areas, which are, are more individual leaves. These are more Just a mass of darks behind there, so I'm not worried about keeping their individual colours so much. I'm now I'm going to nip back in and just rework some of these, 
the lights into it. So. Just uh, popping in. This one's coming in from the side. Just putting in some nice brights there, and also some lighter cool. Oops, <laughs> that's a very soft one. It's just I think that was one of my um, galleries handmade ones. Popping some lighter bits that aren't as yellow, they're more blue. Just to indicate that there are different trees in this little um, area. So they won't all have the same uh, colour on their, their bright areas because they're different sorts of trees. And just overlaying some of those lighter areas on some of the mid-tone areas, getting a nice depth built up there. A bit like pontalism, isn't it? Just uh, pontalism. Just Dabbing, 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 building up the layers of sunlight on the leaves and just carving all that out of the dark behind it. I don't really want it too bright back there, so I think I'll kill those bits I just put in by going over them with a more mid tone. And I will put in a few more of those mid tone ones there. I'll do a little bit more work on here, a little bit more work on the river, and it will be done. I'm not really going to do much more to the foliage. I will, though, put in my one dark, really almost black uh, one. I'm just going to put in some of these branches. And that's kind of working back into the darks that were there in the first place. Pulling out a few branches over the top of them. And that helps to give it a, a bit more... Um, Redimensionality by putting in another layer that's coming out from in front of the river, in front of some of those uh, lighter colours back there. Rocks still need a bit of work on them. So, coming back into my rock shapes and just adding in a few extra darks. And these are going in in a warm sort of purple, not my darkest purple, but to fill in some of the gaps there. Just a wee bit more before I, I let the, the black just speak for itself there. brown, which I haven't really used in this area, so I'm going to use a warm sort of dark brown as well. And then I'm going to go through again and just pick out those highlights a little bit more and then we'll be done. a few more little
so the rocks have been fairly well built out up now I'm just going to give them the little final touches of light coming in on them some of them You can see I'm playing up a couple of smaller areas there with light on them, but I'm leaving the majority of it quite dark. Let me put in a few more of those greys as well though. Now the water. Do I need some more to do a little bit more with the water? I probably do. What I'd like to do is add in a few more little highlights of the really light water running around these little rocks here. And a few little sparkles as it comes in over the... So really what same as I'm doing in the rocks and in the the trees, I'm just adding some little sparkly bits with the lights catching a little bit more. Don't forget to step back every now and then to have a good look at it and see where it's going, if it's going where you want it to, or whether there's more that you have to change. That's helping to create a little pathway by just putting the light there as well. And I'll just do a tiny little touch of, little touches of light up there in that area. Stepping back now, having a look at it, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of the that green water coming in here, in between the rocks. reflections. Take the little bit of the blue so there's a few little bits of sparkle in the reflection area as well. Just a few. They're not the lightest bits of sparkly areas. So I'm not using my lightest blue for this, I'm using a grey, a sort of purpley blue. Little touches of light in there and keeping the brightest light throughout there. Although over there, it is going to get my lightest blue. I'm just going to find it now. Hmm. I think I dropped it, so I'm just going to get it again. <coughs> so it's almost white out here, just for a few little ripples coming over into here again.
And those little tiny dots I'm putting in now are just going to describe the surface of the water so that we know there is a surface and that that's part of the water, not part of the, of the land. So there we are. Using black as a background can be very effective. You're really just carving out of the black when you've got a quite dark reference image as we did here. You're carving the light out of the dark. And that's a very effective way to use darks when you're doing pastel painting. Because as we know, a lot of sets don't have great darks. And unless you've got a dedicated dark set, sometimes it's hard to find all those darks to create that um, sense of depth that you want when you've got a lot of shadowed areas in a painting. You can see that it's quite easy to carve light out of a dark background. In the skill builders that we just did uh, on Friday, you'll have seen that there are various different ways you can get that back, the dark background. But today I've chosen to demonstrate it on a black paper. It's a, a Art Spectrum Color Fix Black, the original fairly textured paper. You can use whatever you like as the dark background, but it will help you when you want to carve the lights out in a reference that's got quite a lot of shadow in it. I hope you enjoyed that demo and I'll see you for the next lesson. Bye for now.